Welcome back, friends and fellow adventurers, to another episode of Cocked, a real play D&D podcast. My name is Alex Groves, and I will be the DM for this final episode on our brief voyage to the southern seas of Manassas. Last time aboard the Ross Piante, the crew was able to survive a torrential winter storm, as well as fix the damages caused by a rogue wave that sadly took one of their goblin crew. Zarthus impressed everyone with his amazing abilities, and the crew was introduced to Ula's Goodberries. Safe to say, nothing will ever be the same again. When we left the crew, they were well underway to Port Savorza with no time to spare, and Glenn was staring into the eye of a giant octopus swimming alongside the ship. I want to insight as far as if I feel like its motions are like it's tracking us or mm-hmm. if it's just traveling near us and it's just a coincidence mm-hmm. or okay. means some type of malicious harm to okay. us. Plus three. So that's another 18. Okay. So I'll give you a little bit of everything with this. You'll know that it's not moving towards you. Okay. It's keeping up with you. You'll know that octopus are generally curious and Aww. not not always hostile unless acted upon. Mm. You know, some people see them and like, oh, a creature, attack it, and then it's going to unleash hell. But it's just, right now, it's just kind of moving parallel with you. It's not advancing towards you at all. And you, the, 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 you just see, every once in a while, and with the little brief moments of clarity when you're looking, you can kind of just see that big eye just looking at the ship. Would I be able to walk away? guess in my head how many <laughs> days worth of food this would feed the ship? Oh my god! You would know that this would give you enough meat to again, and I didn't tell you guys this. It's, you basically have three <laughs> days left to get there on time. Mm. This oh, yeah. would this would be more than enough food for the rest of the journey. How far away is it? Oh my god! It's about thirty feet off the um, the port side. Okay, hang on. I am hating all of this. <laughs> By the way, in case y'all needed to know, I already wild shaped into a brown bear because they're large beasts and black bears are medium. For <laughs> my edification, okay, does an octopus speak a language? You'd have to be, have speak a beast or something like that. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to mind link because mind link says no. the creature must be able to understand at least one language. I would say you don't have in your mind any history of them speaking. Roll another nature check for me. Okay. Don't fuck with the octopus. That's <laughs> well, okay. That's a seven. Okay, yeah. You know they have eight legs. You've had them fried some places. <laughs> just, just random question. I know Zarthus isn't there, but what color is the octopus? And how yeah, long like did a, you like say it was? Like a bright purple. Very. Cool. Hmm? How long did you say it was? Um, it's hard to tell because you're really only seeing like the head of it as it shoots yeah, forward because the I legs are more lit. of like. In comparison to the ship, like mm-hmm. would it be half the ship, the whole ship? Like when it shoots forward, it's fully elongated. It looks like it's about three quarters of the ship long. Golly! When it's fully like you know, yeah. it's, it's when shooting it's fully forward. stretched out. Right, right, right. Glenn kind of takes a deep gulp, and this is off the starboard side, correct? Port side. Port side. Mm-hmm. Port side. That's his lucky side. So, Glenn, Glenn like gulps and looks out. And he turns around and he walks back onto the ship and he goes to find Zarthus oh, and. God. Sir, sir, sir. What? How epic would it be if we killed a giant octopus? Hypothetically? Hypothetically, if we had the chance, should we do it? And Zarthus, why don't you go ahead and roll a nature check? Okay. Roll. And then he will say... Ask the and- druid in bear form, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be able to say anything. Yeah, you can't speak. I can roll. still... Motion. Uh, <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what a bear is. A 10? Okay, that's good. You would know that <clears throat> the same thing, that they're not overtly hostile and they're somewhat intelligent. Aren't they, like, solitary, too? I don't think they normally travel in I packs. don't think you would know probably okay. that much at this time. Reggie so. knows that. It's but. almost <laughs> as big as this boat. How epic would it be? Or should we not touch it? I don't, I don't really know. So it's not a hypothetical, then? Uh, no, hypothetically, it would be the size of the boat. Okay, well, hypothetically... Maybe a little smaller. If we saw a giant octopus that was almost the size of the boat... Yes. ...with our food situation right now. There are other fish in the ocean. There are others, but this is a big ocean. What is the octopus doing? Hypothetically, Hypothetically, the octopus octopus is keeping pace with us and popping its Mm -hmm. eye up every now and then... Staring at me as I'm, it goes across I'm the water gonna, and then goes under. Hypothetically, it would I'm stare at me. Link with you at this point and mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. say, hypothetically, if there was, if there was an octopus 
keeping pace with the ship, where would it be? Port side, 30 feet away. Can you walk on water? Now you want me to walk near it? Do you have a spell or something you can cast to walk? I mean, I'm sure we could, but I can't travel at the same speed as the boat. If I step on the water, I'm going to fall way behind. (gasps) But what if we tied a rope to a harpoon and we hit him, and then I jumped in the water and used it to almost like ski after him? Of course, still all a hypothetical. Of course, all hypothetical. All hypothetical. Hypothetically, would we want to ask Ula? Ula's a bear. I understand that Ula's a bear. (laughs) But... (laughs) I feel like Ula would say, wait for salmon. Okay, hold on. Cut to two goblins standing at the bottom of the helm (laughs) who just came up from below deck, and they see a big bear (laughs) manning the helm. (laughs) Kind of look at each other and just kind of shrug, just like, "Um, (laughs) whatever. And then cut back to you guys, sorry. (laughs) So they're not dumb creatures. They're quite intelligent, more intelligent than some people I know. So killing... We're mind-linked, right? Yeah. You're just going to hear back, don't talk about the goblins like that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, well... Not Is this that. like a party line from the 80s? Like, can the <laughs> goblin up in the... No, <laughs> this, oh, no, no, no. no, no. I, I switched lines. I went to line two. <laughs> eight, like, eight, 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 wait, what the... F- <laughs> um, <laughs> eight, 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 don't talk about goblins uh, like that. What do you say? Mother... F- <laughs> well, I don't really care either way. I'll tell you what, why don't we hypothetically walk up to the deck and then we will physically see if it's still there. So let's hypothetically walk and hypothetically look over the deck and see if it's mm-hmm. hypothetically still there. Sure. Mm-hmm. Glenn is going to like sprint up the stairs. <laughs> we're, we're just, we're literally just staring at each other and just talking this. Real quick, if he runs up the stairs and then I see Zarthus with him on the same port side staring down... Can I make a perception check to see what the heck's going on? Sure can. I'm, I'm just going to, sl- like, I'm not, like, sprinting with you. I'm, like, kind of, like, just barely trailing behind you. That's about it. Let's see what you did there. You're just barely trailing. Yeah, oh, you know. my God. Right. Mm. <laughs> it's okay, DM. <laughs> just bear with us. Oh. Hey, the- Glenn dies. A tentacle ra- yeah. grabs him. <laughs> he's Octopus gone. got real curious. And that, that shiny harpoon comes out. <laughs> Goes right up your ass. Okay. <laughs> okay I'm, I'm poor I'm octopus. Just, don't talk about him okay, like that. Okay. So, so you guys are at the port side of the ship now. Okay. Gonna... And you're gonna roll perception. I rolled a twenty-two. Okay. Yeah, you see giant octopus off the port side, but now it's about forty feet off the the starboard. And then I look at Zarthus and Glenn and just squint my eyes a bit. <laughs> so I ro- I rolled a fifteen to perceive if it's further away from the ship or not. Yeah. So I feel like it's drifted a little. So are you back at the port side? Yes. Okay. It immediately comes about 15 feet closer than it is right now. Mm. It is kind of, you see it just kind of move and then stays parallel. And that big eye, every once in a while, you kind of just see, look up at you. Yes, Arthur's, they're just standing there with their arms crossed, mm-hmm. like just curiously looking at it. Just looking back at the octopus, essentially. Mm-hmm. Do you? Do you think we can talk to it? Could I do a nature history check to know if octopus can communicate with some language? Sure. Only oh, ten. Ten. Okay. You don't think so? Okay. You know. But again, you know they're intelligent too. Yeah. I'm gonna remembering that they're intelligent since mm-hmm. I'm here. Just kind of wave at it to see if it does anything back, mm-hmm. or to see if it recognizes that it's a wave in general. It's swimming at such a fast pace to keep up with the ship. It can't, can't, can't really even notice it. Yeah, you don't see a tentacle go like. You know. Yeah. How or anything long have like they that, been so. standing there? Maybe it's just been a minute. Um, I'll um, link with Glenn again and say, I don't know if... Well, do we know that Ula can speak with animals? Like, does she have a spell or something that can do that? Mm-hmm. She's not that kind of druid. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not doing anything. It's just watching us. I don't think there's any reason to kill it unless it latches onto the ship and tries to bring us down. At this point, mm. it drifts about another five feet away from the ship. What if I cast sleep on it? And then we tried to get it in the net before it woke up. How big are our net? Not big. Probably not. not big enough for the whole body. But if we could corral it in and kind of try to tie it up so that it, you know, isn't able to latch onto the ship. Oh. So, okay, question. Is this squid classified as large or bigger than large? It's large. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it's, it's like, on the large side of large. He, he, okay. said, he said it's three quarters the size of this ship. Okay. When, it's, so, when it's fully long, it, yeah, the octopus, it, it's I mean, fully elongated. It's the length of about three quarters of the boat. That was me trying to get their attention to go back to work. <laughs> uh, Glenn's fishing. It is his work. Okay. Thank you. So, 
hypothetically, of course, um, if it does mm-hmm. go to sleep, it says my telekinesis thing, it says one willing creature. Mm-hmm. So if it's unconscious, does it automatically kind of just move since it can't really resist the effect? Of sleep? No, of my telekinesis. You can lift something that large? It says a good point. large or smaller object or one willing creature. Well, it would be willing no matter what. Even if it's asleep, it's not willing. It's just unconscious at right. that point. Okay. You guys would probably have to time it well, too, because the second it would go to sleep, it would just stop moving. Yeah. And, yeah. And it immediately would just... Starts that clock. Yeah. Shoot back. Of a minute, too. Yeah. You guys do what you want to do. Nothing. <laughs> Glenn. But, but think about how cool it'll be. At, at, at this point, you actually see it's it's not keeping up as much now. Like it's not it's kind of falling up. back. Yeah. Well, let's. Glenn's gonna gonna look at Zarthus because we're still linked, and he's just gonna go, "Give me one minute." And he's gonna look out at the octopus, and he's gonna try to mind link with it. Anyways, okay. he's right. just gonna be like, "Reach out with your thoughts, Luke." <laughs> he's just gonna gonna look at him and be like. Do you mean us harm, or are you just curious, friend? And then wait. You don't hear words. It's almost like an empath type of ability that you don't have, but the way you're... It, it's mm-hmm. intelligent. So it's intelligence mm-hmm. is meeting your, you know, mind link. Okay. And you just feel this overwhelming just curiosity. Like, what is this thing that I'm swimming next to? So, Zarthus, you see Glenn kind of smile, and he's just going to say, Best of luck, friend. We mean you no harm. And he's just going to turn and look at Zarthus and be like, He was just curious. It, it, didn't, it didn't have any ill will towards us, so I don't, I don't think we should. It would be epic, but that, that one's not a grumpy octopus. Maybe the next one we come across. If yes. You want to do anything. And then once you've kind of communicated that, you basically just see the head dip, and then it's just it's gone. It's just in the fathoms now. He's just going to look at Zarthus and be like, well, I guess we keep looking for fish then. I'll keep working with the goblins. Bear Ula. <laughs> yes. Please do a strength saving throw. Bula. 25. Awesome. Wisdom, please. Oh, wait. Hold on. I said 25 with perception. Hold on one second. You know what? If you say it with confidence. That was actually a 22, but I oh, think it's still fine. The ship explodes. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you said wisdom? Yes, please. 23. Cool. Four. All right, so yeah, you guys are staying on course, making good time, Zarthus. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and do an investigation on the lines and everything? Man, I kick ass as a bear. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sixteen. Oh, it's gonna be on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen. So yeah, everything's right. looking good. You'll be able to give everyone their jobs and everything what they're supposed to be doing. So, you are up in the crow's nest. Yes, I have. So gone go up ahead there. and do a perception check, and I'll say looking. with advantage because you got your little friend up there. Looking for fish. 19. Very good. Just see kind of open water. You're not seeing any fish right now. But you see something kind of off in the distance, I'd say, off the, the starboard side. How far off? Maybe 50 yards. It's kind of off to the side. You're not going to hit it. It oh. looks just like wood. So it looks stationary? It's floating. I will mine link with Bear Ula <laughs> and let you know that 50 yards off starboard side, it looks to be something floating. It doesn't look very big. Why don't you do a, um investigation check? It's a goblin. Can I? How can the hell I would have gotten this far ahead of you guys? I don't know. I don't know. Storm Swells. blew him away. The typhoon Swells. picked up and shot him forward. <laughs> so is this with advantage too? Because there's somebody up no. there with me. No. Twelve. Okay. You're looking at it as you got, as the ship passes, and it's like man, it's like a piece of a ship. Mm. Do another perception check with advantage. Uh, yeah, twenty three. Okay. You see about three or four more of the same kind of thing, like floating, different sizes. And there's also, you just kind of see like a little bit of like, you know, like kelp and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times with storm, like stuff will kick up and stuff like that. You just kind of see that floating around as well. I'm going to immediately look to see if there's any signs of humanoid figures, Mm -hmm. for one. Mm -hmm. And then two, I'm looking for any caskets or barrels or anything that are floating. Okay. Do I see any of that or do I need to roll for it? It's all like scrap. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to link with Bear Ula and tell her what it is, that it looks like there's a shipwreck. Um, I don't see any survi- no signs of survivors or cargo. And I'm then- also going to tell you that there are a couple pieces that are kind of in your way. They're not big, but you will run into it if you don't canter one way or the other. I will uh, mind link with Zarthus about the, um, the debris in front of us and then 
like I said, immediately sprint down, try to head up to the front and see if I can recover any of that stuff before we hit it mm-hmm. to see if there's any writing or anything on it. Like okay, if there's so any a couple things are going to happen now uh-huh. because of what you told me. I need you to do a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay. That's or acrobatic, sorry. 18. Okay, good. Because you're rushing down out of the crow's nest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's moving quick because yeah. he doesn't want to hit it. He wants so, to try to see it mm-hmm. and then have enough time, if possible, to tell Ula which way to, okay. to steer around some of the stuff. Well, you, you saw one basically right in front. Okay, so are, as he's going down, he'll relay that to Ula. Are okay. we mind-linked where I can talk to you? Mm-hmm. Darthys will go to the front of the ship as well. Okay. So what, what do you tell Ula? Ula... There's debris in the water. You need to turn port side, not too fast, but we're going to try to see if we can get close and see what this debris is from. So he tells you it's right in front of you to move port. Mm-hmm. Do um, a dexterity. Uh, Wait, throw. were you moving port? Well, this we're, is going to see if she re- reacts fast enough. I'm sorry. What dexterity. Dexterity, mm-hmm. do, the dexterity of the bear? Yeah. Yes. Oh, then that's a 12. Okay, that's fine. What you do is basically you don't cut the wheel, you just do it enough. Could I do an investigation mm-hmm. on it to sure. like predict the trajectory of yeah. it? Um, if I like guess that it's going to hit, then I'll move it. Yeah. But if, if I don't think it is, then I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Uh, 15. Yeah. So you feel like you guys aren't going to run right into it, but it kind of looks like the same thing that Glenn had seen before, like the side of a hole of a ship. Yeah, Zarth is just is just gonna keep doing that with like debris that's coming. If mm-hmm. there's like any major like big pieces, he's yeah. just gonna see if it's gonna hit, and if it is, he'll move it. Sure. Or uh, they'll move it. I mean. Okay. So before it drifts past us, mm-hmm. is Glenn able to get to the front before it, the what looked like the hole drifts past? I'm us? gonna say there's probably two or three more pieces that you guys are coming towards. If it looks big enough to be the front or the hull of a ship. Mm-hmm. Glenn is going to be like, Zarthus, can you can you pick those up? Can we look closely and see if we see a name or anything? Sure. Standing there, and as Zarthus is potentially picking up pieces of it, are we able to look at it and try to determine what it was? If it was most likely the storm that took this apart, or if this ship was attacked by something? Yeah, you, you can try. Oh, well, that'd be what like an investigation. Are you doing it as it's passing, or are you trying to uh, pick it up out of the water to look at it? Just as it's passing. Like, I'm not, yeah, not going to pick it. It's going to be it. with disadvantage. Okay. I would, yeah, I would wait until you pick a piece up for I got a Glenn 17. Someone. With disadvantage? Yeah. Okay. You can see the the wood is splintered. What you know of sea life, a kraken could have gotten hold of it and squeezed it and splintered apart. A rogue wave could have, much bigger than what hit you in this passing storm, could have just annihilated the thing, too. Right. So, so there's like no guess, there's know? no like claw marks on it. There's no you okay, know, nothing like that. Okay. It's 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 indeterminate. Right. I mean, you can see that it was splintered, but not Can't nothing tell, like how it happened. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then after I'd say another few minutes, then you don't see any other. Anything did you else. did Just, you pick any of the big pieces up? Because if you picked any of the big pieces up, Glenn would try to look as close as he could if it was floating. Uh, I mean, but I'll, if you didn't, I'll, I'll pick like one piece up. Okay. I guess. And All just right. put it um, like next to you. All right. So okay. let's see. Let me. Um, so he picks up, I'd say, about an eight by six foot side of a panel and <clears> sets <throat> it down. Do an investigation. With advantage? Why? Because, sorry, this is helping by holding it still. But he's not helping investigate. Damn it. Okay. Can I uh, do my own investigation, actually? You guys want to do two separate <laughs> investigations? Sure. Natural Bar of conspiration. Nice. Natural twenty. Okay. <laughs> so Glenn t- takes a nap. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> Let's see here. It's perception or investigation. Yeah. Ten. Okay. Wow. Ten. I, so I got a one for my bardic inspiration. You're like, hey, there's extra wood on the ship. Um, <laughs> Zarthus, you see that again. You see the splintering, but what you notice now that it's on there, especially the natural twenty, is that you can see the curvature. Of the, the way the, the ship would look, the way the hull would run. The splintering that you're seeing almost looks like it's splintered out as opposed to something crushing it or something smashing into it. Like it yeah, it looks like some type of explosion from inside. It looks like something, yeah, kind of... Maybe they had the same things. <laughs> guessing, I mean, it, it was internal damage because... Glenn's going to like walk over and look and be like, based on the splintering, I'd have to agree with you. Great. <laughs> So now um, it's about midday. You notice that the ship 
isn't moving as fast as it was. Okay. It's a little bit slower than it was. So, um, you are... Do the winds feel weaker, or... No. 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 Can I do a nature check on that? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Natural 20. Okay. I mean, you're, you're kind of doing it out there up in all the nature check. You just feel like the boat is moving a little bit slower. I would say with that, you probably would... Would you look out at all, or are you just going to stand yeah. in the middle of the boat and just like... I don't yeah, know, I mean, I'd, I'd like like look out and see okay. if there's anything weird about the area or anything like that. You guys are moving through um, and you can see it if you looked overboard or up in the process at this point um, with kind of known as a, a kelp forest. Oh, you okay. know, there's just a lot of kelp on you know, around the surface of the water. Okay. So it's just, you know, slowing things down. Nothing sus about the area. You guys are still pretty deep out, so you know, it's probably a little bit unusual I wasn't usually that far out in the ocean, but again, you guys have been through big storms and stuff like that, so it's yeah. up to you to you know what you think of that. Bear Ula, mm-hmm. well, are you still? No, well, you wouldn't be a bear at this point anymore. It's four, four hours. hours. Oh, four hours. So mm-hmm. let's just say it, it's dropping now. That's, okay. Let's say it's we're at the four hour mark. Okay. So do um, mm-hmm. you want to try it again in bear form? I don't know how many times you can no. wall shape or I was say, try it on your own. Do it another time. But okay. so is the check at the three hour and fifty eight minute mark though? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I probably should have. Uh, <laughs> Glenn? Nine. Glenn is <laughs> on the main deck right now. Okay. So you kind of feel the boat lean when that <laughs> as, happens, as it's starting to turn a little bit. Yeah. Can I go ahead and go back into bear form? Because then I'm like, I'm sure. you know what? I was better this way. <laughs> yep. Sure, I'm fine with that. Okay, let me do that. And do you want me to do it again? Yes, please. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is where Ula becomes a werebear just to maintain a helm. <laughs> on a boat. No, that's even worse. That's a seven. Okay, yeah. The, the, the boat is dramatically uh. moving starboard at this point. <laughs> that is a fair sound. <laughs> to, to uh. Actually, actually to, to the point to where all three of you do dexterity is here. Oh my girl. god. Oh, well, I did fine there. 12. 24. 24 and it's 19 on the die so you're fine yeah you're fine <laughs> everyone just you know oh my gosh a couple of goblins tumble and roll oh no you know because you guys you if you, you you did two fails in a row so yeah. you you kind of get to where the boat actually kind of digs down a little bit you guys lose quite a bit of speed at first because you're making a <sighs> turn you hear creaking because it's such a dramatic you know um yeah glenn will turn and sprint to the helm okay I'll just like mind link with Ula and be like, scoot, scoot, scoot. Yes, thank you. Which what what, what check? Athletics. Uh, twenty three. Okay. Yeah, yeah you got Wisdom, that. please. <laughs> okay, okay. Just straight wisdom. Yes. Uh, twelve. Okay, that's I fine. Drop out of bear you form. you get it you get it back on track, but you, you guys lost a lot of speed, so it's going to take a little while for you. <sighs> Lines. I'm just going to tell you to stay there and state and hold it straight. Only a nine. If we would have switched, I would have had to do another check. It's, yeah. it's there, yeah. I think. There are ropes. Yeah, you know. There are ropes around. You're switching hands. Okay. So you guys are still in this kelp, <clears throat> I'd say, for another probably hour or so. You never feel like you get all your speed back. Is Glenn remaining on the helm? Um, Glenn will look at Ula and be like, do you... Do you want to try your hand at fishing, or can you just hold this straight? We're getting ready to clear the kelp. I mean, I could try again. What's up to you guys? He will pat Ula on the shoulder as she goes to take over and kind of try to help adjust as we're tr- um, we're swapping and just be like, Ula, I have I have all the confidence in the world in you and cast bardic inspiration. Okay. Athletic saving throw. Does she get advantage because I was helping her? Yeah. You roll a one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't Strength. do it again. <laughs> 17. Okay, yeah. You get her steady again, and I'm going to say you're you're okay for now. Should I do wisdom again, too? No. Uh, okay, Zarthus, what are you doing after you check the, check the lines? I mean, to my knowledge, they're okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to your knowledge, there are ropes everywhere. To my, <laughs> my infinite knowledge yeah. tells me that there are ropes on the ship currently yeah. as we speak. 
I'm gonna go check on the weapons we have and make sure that okay. they're still secure. Yep. You go below deck and they haven't moved an inch. Okay. Yep. They are they're packed in there. So. Okay. Then I'll just go up above deck again and just start fishing okay. for food. I still think we should have loaded the ballistas and just gone after that giant octopus. Or, you know, it's intelligent life. Well, so, once I realized it was intelligent, it meant no harm. Yeah. After about an hour or so, you guys clear the kelp forest. Mm-hmm. You're still just not getting the full speed that you had before. I'm going to mind link with the goblin up in the crow's nest mm-hmm. and have him continue searching mm-hmm. uh, around for any schools of fish mm-hmm. or any creature. And while we're doing that, I'm going to ask Sarthas. So I'm going to be like, do, do you remember the ship taking this long to get up to speed? I feel like we've been out a while and it just seems like we're not quite getting where we should. Odd, I suppose. Or we should check the bilges again and maybe make sure there's we're not taking on water somewhere that we're not looking. I, I don't I don't mind if you want to stay here and fish or yeah. I can fish and you can go. I, I can go down. So who wants to go okay. down and so you're gonna go down um start this and check the bilge? Right. Okay. So you go down to the lowest <clears throat> deck where you were before, you open the hatch and do an investigation. Fifty. There's a little bit of water in there, but nothing bad now. So you're fishing, Glenn? Yes, Glenn is fishing. All right. They point out big, Uh-oh. big, big okay. fish. Glenn's going to look. And it's off the, the starboard side. It's just keeping up with the, the ship a little bit. Mm-hmm. Do a nature check. It's about 20 feet off the starboard. <sighs> Again, you are a master of the ocean. You have seen it all. You know what you're looking at. All right, inspiration. That's an 18, I believe. Okay, good. You see you said nature, right? Just go yes. Yeah, so that's plus one. Yeah. Eighteen. Just kind of crest the top of the water a little bit. The tip of a dorsal fin. As you see a rather large hunter shark off your starboard bow. Oh. Yeah. You would know with the check you got, uh, hunter sharks are very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Now they won't attack a ship. It's got a lot of meat on it. Glenn is immediately gonna turn and look to the closest goblin he has. Mm-hmm. And he's gonna look at it and mind link and say, Go get bolts. Mm-hmm. We need the ballistas mm-hmm. on the starboard side mm-hmm. loaded. Bring the special stuff. Okay. So he yells at another one, and they run down. And they mount another, you know, I'd say a few minutes. Zarthus, are you on the ship? I thought, um, I thought um, I was still below deck. Yeah, because yeah, you went down to check. So okay. basically, you all of a sudden see goblins running towards the brig. <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> Zarthus is just going to just, like... Without moving their head, just yeah. eyed. <laughs> yeah. Just, just so like, so yeah. So they they run they run down below deck. I'm gonna say here they have a bunch of bolts and stuff stored. So they 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 grab one of them starts grabbing bolts. The other one runs to the brig and starts to uh, basically untie that crate. Okay. Yeah. So one is basically grabbing a bunch of bolts and taking them upstairs. The other one is is basically dragging this you know new crate of the you know you know attachments. Help him. Um, this Arthur is just, just gonna mind link with them and say, "What are you taking those for?" Glenn, big fish. <laughs> Sorry, this is just gonna. Um, uh, it's okay. I'll help you carry them. Mm. I'll take them to Glenn, and I'll just stop what I'm doing. Okay. While that's taking place, because I'm assuming that's gonna take a couple minutes for them to get everything yes. up. Yeah. Are there any other goblins on deck? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Root, Root is up there. He's, I'd say he's on the other side. Okay, Glenn is going to mind link with Root. Okay. And be like, Root, I need you to help prep all the ballistas starboard side. Okay. We have bolts <laughs> coming up. Yep. Please get some help. Let's get them ready. Right. Big fish yeah. taking it down. And, and Root would know that each one of them has like... You know, Ballista has basically a bolt attached to the side of it that is uh-huh. not ready. So he goes and, and he basically loads. I would say he loads the the one of the very. Glenn's um, about to shoot all six of these. <laughs> You're about to shoot this. Yeah. <laughs> one shark popped okay. up and he's like, oh. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Glenn is so excited right get, now. Get yeah. the ship battle ready, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> We are about to fight Glenn's, God. Glenn's about to go to war with the shark. <laughs> the shark is, he's still there, but, you know, how, how long how, he's going to be swimming around. How big so. is the shark? It better be like a megalodon. He said no, it's, it's huge. It, no, 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 it didn't. It's large. He said yeah. extra large. It's very large. Yeah. 
but it's large. Yeah, like I, it, it is not. Like I said, it's not the Obliteros. It's not the Megalodon. Yeah, like I know what you said, but Glenn's like it's a Megalodon. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to die. Oh, the ship oh Glenn, it, Glenn is like we're, ready. Go, we're going yeah. to Valhalla. <laughs> All right. At this point, they bring the extra bolts up. Zarthus and the other goblin bring the uh, uh, the little attachment things up. So what's what's all the Could. commotion about? Glenn is like standing on the starboard side by where the gangplank comes in. When they get top level, they're just going to look around at goblins loading all the ballistas. Yeah, looking. and that side of the ship is frantic right now. Like, <laughs> nothing else is being done on board. Glenn has got an audience, and there's this big ass shark, and all of the goblins, if they're not working on the ballistas, they're just looking over, just chattering between each other. They're just going to ask you, Glenn, what's going on exactly? So, you remember how we passed on the giant octopus? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a giant shark, and they're super aggressive, so I'm not too worried about this one, and he's near the surface of the water, and I really think that we need food, so shark fillets sound delicious. Sure, but is it absolutely necessary to load every single ballista that we have yes is it necessary to get, to, get, to get the heavy artillery i rolled a, i rolled an eight for persuasion on that one so you probably don't believe me at all real quick you notice that the shark actually starts to move out a little ahead of the ship now is it still within range of the first ballista it is are the ballistas loaded oh yeah Glenn's going to look at the, the goblin on the first one, and he's going to tell it where it is and mm-hmm. try to get him to sight it in and tell him to fire as soon as he believes that he's got it right. Okay. Is anyone assisting him firing this thing, or is he just... I'm taking the heavy artillery, as I'm calling it, back down below deck. Okay. Wait, we might need those! It's swimming too close to the ship to safely shoot these at it. <sighs> Fine, I understand. He will misty step where the goblin is towards the front. And right. after that conversation, be like, hey, wait, and help him so sight this it this frontmost in. ballista? Mm-hmm. Okay. Aim right behind the eyes. You've got this. And cast Bardic Inspiration on him. So the extra D8. Mm-hmm. Okay. So with advantage. Okay. He fires, and it gets right underneath the dorsal fin. Whole five points of damage. Sorry. And you see the thing die really quick as soon as it gets hit. Turn and look at the crow's nest and be like, look for anything moving similar to that. Okay. I'm just going to wait. Don't see anything. Son of a bitch. Yep. Zarthus will just yell back at Glenn, you got this. Glenn just like half-heartedly waves. And he's just looking down. He's going to suddenly look over at Zarthus and like mind link and just be like, well, we hit the son of a bitch, but then it just dove. That's what animals tend to do. They tend to run when they're harmed or scared. Probably should have shot it with acid. Well, and take the rest <laughs> of the shit down in your glory. Hmm. The goblin just kind of like, oh. <laughs> and then Glenn kinda, just turned around and it's like, that, stand down, take the bolt, take the, the ballista bolts out, just set them next to it, it's okay. Yeah. And they kind of shuffle back and start doing what they were doing before, so. Bear, Ula? Yes. Can I get a athletic saving throw, please? <laughs> no. Pretty, please? Um, 16? Yeah, you're good. It won't do the wisdom because I feel like you're in the same. You've got a spot on the horizon that you're you're heading towards. Lines and rigging. You give that a shot, Zarthus. What a fourteen this time. That's good. Yeah, you feel like it's going well. And then you've been doing the the swap, so do the investigation. Twelve. Yeah, it's fine. You have a feeling after the the boat went topsy turvy, there's probably not any more rats left anyway. So it's actually getting towards the end of the day. You kind of see the sun starting to set, and in the far distance behind you. Everyone do a, a perception check. And I'll say you, you could have dropped out of Vulture well, at this point. Have, so, yeah. yeah. So you can do your advantage. <clears throat> can I take my passive? That's 18. Um, in this situation? Sure. Sure. I, I, think, I think we're in the middle of an ocean. <laughs> I think we are. <laughs> nice. Uh, I got a <laughs> I like 14. It. Okay. So two of you. <laughs> um, I will say you almost even... you. You can hear distant, far, far back, just distant rumble, and you see that there's another storm um, from Stop. the from the northwest. Uh, it's very far off at this point, okay. but you know, you know, within a day, it'll be probably on you, and you've got two days left okay. to get to Port Samosa. 
captain puts together the last of the food. And I also cast Goodberry. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And I get four. You know what? I think that's good for. I think the captain will take part of it. Yeah. And I think the the three main crew members will should take part of it too. Exactly. To give the you know everything that's left, which would not be very good anyway. So the goblins, I'm sure, will be fine. This good berry again uh, brought to you by <laughs> Bean Boozled. Oh shoot! Is that is that caca? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, Reggie, do you want um, red or yellow? I'll take red. So you got pomegranate yeah. or old bandage. Okay. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? I have, like, a brown with some white Poo color. Stacks. That's either cappuccino or liver and onions. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you have a drink break? I don't. Okay. Okay. So Alex, scared. what do you have? I'll, I'll tell you because it's one we already had. Oh, berry blue or toothpaste. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I have either <laughs> buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Well. Oh no! <laughs> okay, so, we're vomiting. Ready? Right. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, that's, like so bad. That's, that's good eating. I tell you what. Oh my god. Mine is definitely toothpaste. <laughs> That's that's good eating. That is rotten egg. I cannot. I cannot stick this back in my mouth. It is. Uh, oh my god. The liver. And, uh, it is still. <laughs> I got a tiny bit, and it is still just gaseous out of my mouth right now. Hey, if you don't eat it, then you don't get the effects, and you're gonna have to get it. <laughs> just, just, just take it like a pill. Just, just, just swallow just it. Great. Like, you, you, I. You got I this. Not. Okay. I had rotten egg. I don't want to hear it. Hey. <laughs> hey. I had oh. barf earlier too. Which okay. tastes a lot hey, like dishwater. You've got this. You also get a D8 to your. Oh, Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> I don't think you realize how bad this is. Oh my god. Three, okay. two, one, hey. go. Swallow, drink, go, swallow. Oh, get those onions too. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Red, did, you, did you get pomegranate? Dang it. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. That's good too. Oh my But we God. all feel sustained. And <laughs> yeah, do we? Well, I do. Zarthus does. Again, this good berry brought to you by Bean Boozled. It would be unofficially <laughs> to see the bear oh. puke. Though. Oh, God, I burped. The yeah. goblins get the rest of the food, right? Yeah, they get yeah. the rest of the mm-hmm. food. You guys know that to make it the last little trek, you could probably push, but you know, you guys could use some food too. Yeah. So. But you have this, you're sustained now, um, so you'll be good. The captain comes on deck. Has a good berry. Isn't real happy about it. I and assume is everybody up on deck? As, yeah. so as this, sorry, she takes the helm, mm-hmm. Glenn will pull out his hand drum and start playing a, a, a quiet beat. And you just hear, Turkey, take the wheel. Save mm-hmm. us from this swell. Crew can't do this on their own. We're letting go. Captain, here's another chance. Save us from seas <laughs> we're on. I appreciate the commitment. Go. Turkey, take the wheel. I didn't know he did this, guys. I'm yep. so sorry. So Nobody did. I Zarthus did it like 30 minutes jumps ago. Over, takes off the ring of water walking. And all. <laughs> <laughs> just, just goes overboard. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> it was much better than my rendition, no, though. I thought it was beautiful. Because I, I, I rolled Commit a... Commit to the bit. <laughs> I rolled a 21 for performance. So it was much better than mine. Sorry, Ron, there you go. Um, okay, so that's great, and, and she she loves it and, and appreciates it. Um, so everyone's about to go below deck. It's for you, Captain. Did you guys tell the Captain? Oh, yeah, I would have filled her in on everything during the day okay. um, to look out for a shark with a uh, bolt sticking out. Sure. He might be grumpy and want revenge, but I, I think we lost him at the same time, and then just turn after saying that and go down. Okay. Um, okay. Zarthus is just gonna, you know, with this habit, just stay up on <laughs> deck with the captain at the helm just for like an hour or like 30 minutes and then go below deck okay. to sleep. Great. Okay. Well, let's go into bed. Okay. Before everyone heads down below, you kind of feel like a bit of a shudder at first. Everyone do a dexterity saving throw. 15. 21. Okay. 13. Okay, so you all are able to maintain your footing. The captain, well, she's holding the helm, so she's okay. 
the ship almost comes to a complete stop rather suddenly. And you guys kind of sit there for a moment. And then all of a sudden, the back of the ship starts to dip down, oh, you know, being pulled back. And my question, am I, am I still, since I said I was staying out there for a little bit, am I still... Well, everyone's out there. So oh, you okay. said you're up by the helm. I figured you're talking to her. I mean, if you're off yeah. by the stairs or whatever, I mean, whatever you want to be. I yeah, just essentially just right next to her. You're right next to her? Yeah. Okay. All of a sudden, so who's looking at the back of the ship? So I would say I would closest to like the stairs to go below deck. I'm just, mm-hmm. I just turned to look. I'm not going that way yeah. yet. You basically see a little bit of kelp come up on to the back railing of the ship. And then all of a sudden, the ship goes back even further, and it, this a massive wave of kelp, probably 30 feet above the deck. I knew that fucking kelp was a problem. Comes up and slams down on the upper deck where the helm is. Okay. Okay. So, you're up there. Yeah. Another deck standard I, saving throw, please. I'm going to say I probably would have been up there, too, because I probably would have okay. been going down the stairs to the main deck. Okay. But as soon as it started to list, I would have run back up to see what it was. So, okay. I, I would say I was probably up there, too. Okay. So, deck standard saving 60. Throw. Okay. I don't, I don't, I, I refuse. What'd you get? Nine. Okay. You dive out of the way as this wall of kelp slams down onto the helm. The mizzen sail, the back mast here, broken off and goes forward onto the main deck. The captain rolled very poorly and she's immediately engulfed in this. And so are you. Mm-hmm. You're going to take... <laughs> Oh, 28 bludgeoning damage as this wall of kelp just slams down on top of you. As it slams down onto the helm, you see it surge, and this thing is pulling itself up out of the ocean, up onto the ship. And then it's starting to spread. Roll initiative. Nine. <laughs> Very cool. 17. Um, I hit my dice as I went to pick it up. I, I hit my digital dice as well when I went to pick it up. <laughs> 15. Glenn, you're underneath this thing. It's a strength save. Take it out. <laughs> 23? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Against a 2? Sure. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you got out. You're basically right at the edge where the stairs are starting to go down onto the mid deck, and you're able to just pull yourself out of it. That was your action. What do you want to do now? I'm going to scoot back, and I cannot see the captain. No. Do I know the general area where she was, though, compared to me? Like, kind of, but... Fuck it, you know what she'd do it for Glenn. Glenn wants to move and get close to where he believes she is, and then uh, I won't be able to do anything until next turn, but he's just going to kind of hold there and wait and try to see if he can see her or if he sees her hand or anything start to come out to... So you're not moving um, away from the thing at all? No. You know what? I didn't use a spell. So he is going to misty step from where he is onto the cross beam of the main mast right. and uh, reappear there and mine link with Root. Okay. And just be like, Root, we're in a lot of trouble. If you can get any ballistas turned and aimed at this thing, aim it at this thing. Try to aim above where the ship deck would be. Mm-hmm. We'll say it was at the change of the guard, so we're going to say all the goblins were on deck. You've got 13 that are following Root. So they're, they're working on that now. It's going to take a little while yeah. for them to move yeah, it. They're, they they're can running, yeah. The other goblins are beyond frightened. Ula, you're up. Confirm for me. Is this like a magical plant? This is, it... this is a considered a monstrosity. Okay. So, so, no. No. Okay. Well, shit. I hate you. Sorry. All right. Well, um, it has to make a con save of 15. <clears throat> uh, 18? fucking hate you. Okay, hold on. You still take half damage. Okay. Question. Yeah. How big is it currently? Like, is it like rising above the ship or is it just like creeping up it on the It did sides? it first. Basically, you saw a little bit come up on the back railing and then the big, like, basically 30 foot wave of it. It pulled itself up onto the helm. And just like let its weight drop. Right, exactly. And now the rest of it is just kind of... Just like sitting there and just undulating up. Yeah, exactly. 33, so half of 33. Okay. Which would be 16 points of necrotic damage. Okay. All right. Zarthus, it's your turn. I want to do some sort of check to see if I can know or like see, like at this point, if it has some sort of core to like mainly attack so mm-hmm. I'm not just stabbing at like an arm or something. Yeah. Um, I would just say investigation. 17. So I think with the investigation check you, you, you got, you can assume that the center of it is right at the very back of the, the ship right now, okay. on, on deck. 
on deck. Yeah. For now, Zarthus is just gonna hack and slash at the spot he believes the captain <laughs> to be at, since they, um, since she was right at the helm. Yeah, yeah, because you kind of see it's it's starting to move itself down. Just started to kind of move at the top of the steps, and it's kind of just oozing its way down. You see okay. kind of the tendrils of all the twisted bits of kelp and stuff like that getting down. They'll just start making attacks at this thing where like the helm is, mm-hmm. and just see if they can eventually find the captain. Okay. Excuse me, is there still kelp on all sides where it is dangling into the water? or So there's stuff hanging off the back still, and um, there's stuff right here at the front pushed up against the rail at the helm. Okay. And you can kind of see it. It's starting to move like under and kind of in between the rails. Yeah, Zarthus will just um, will just start slashing at the, um, the part where hmm? they believe the captain was. First one is only a 13. Hits. Okay. It's um, kelp. Um, eight slashing. Or okay. no, yeah, piercing. Second attack, 19. Okay. Nine piercing, and they're going to use a psionic energy die and do a psionic strike with this attack. Okay. So that's 1d8 plus 5, uh, 11 force damage on top of that. Okay. And then they're going to use their bonus action to attack with their offhand, and they do have two weapon fighting as their mm-hmm. fighting style. Yeah. Only an 11. 11 does not hit. Okay. So as you see, like, you'll, you'll cut one off here, and then one another one flies off, but others are kind of still kind of moving right. towards it. But you're 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 impeding it from advancing. The goblins are next. I'm just going to kind of do a general like success roll. Oof. Okay, three does not help. Um, <laughs> they are kind of moving the ballistas, but they're not. You know, they're heavy yeah. and they're tripping over themselves because they keep looking back, wondering what the heck is this thing. Captain, you do not see the captain. The engulfing kelp's turn. It advances forward. It's not very quick moving, but it advances forward everywhere. So every rail that you see, mm-hmm. the steps, you basically, the entire thing moves forward five feet. So it's not one centered mass right now. Every little bit of kale is able to slip through any kind of crack or anything like mm-hmm. that. A couple of the tendrils get to this lattice hatch and midship, and they actually start to go down yeah. into the ship. So it's trying to go into the hatch that's down there? Oh yes. Oh my god, that's yeah. what exploded the ship. It's going through here yeah. right here. Yeah. Is there a way for me to get down from this crossbeam without using a spell? 15 feet? So I think you could make that. Glenn is going to jump off and uh, cast Polymorph on himself. Okay. And turn into a huge giant crab. Okay. okay. This is a huge beast. Your midship, all right. And I don't believe I can use my attack action this turn because my action is to turn into the crab, correct? Right, right. So he is going to, Glenn, you guys see him jump off the center mass, almost like swan dive, and then you just see this giant crab take that form and slam down and basically prepare with his pincers to try to clip anything that comes down the stairs or into the cargo hatch to start trying to basically contain it and push it back. Yep. Okay. All right, Ula, you're up. I want to go to the side of the ship, and can I see back behind the ship if it's still in the water? You'd have to get back there. There's no (laughs) way for you to see right now. I mean... Could I it's difficult climb terrain and over it... the side and walk along the side by holding the rail as well to get... Yeah. You're going to have to <clears throat> double move, basically, to get close enough. Mm. And that'll be your turn. Unless you have a bonus turn. I do. Okay, let me do that. Let okay. Me, I'm going to move and I'm going to double move. Yep. The end of it, if there is an end, you don't know where it ends or begins, really lifts up out of the water and is not still in so basically it's not all in the water anymore mm-hmm. you can you can basically assume by this that the bulk of it is up on top of the, the very back of the ship right now okay am i able to misty step back <clears throat> 30 feet okay let me do that and then that'll be my turn for right now so in okay. a puff of smoke you just hear she disappears she sounds like a container of ranch dip clothing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't understand what that was okay <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this you're up. They're just gonna keep slashing at the part at the helm. Yeah. Only an 11 for the first one. That, that's a miss. 24 for the second. That's it. Seven. Okay. And bonus action offhand hit 28. Yep. 
eight piercing and they're going to use another psionic strike and mm -hmm. do six force damage on top of that. Okay. All right. Um, and while they're slashing, they're looking for literally any sort of thing that resembles the captain, like mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Like the anchor on their bag, any mm -hmm. armor that um, she's wearing. Sure. Yeah. You don't see anything yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it is goblins next. Oh, good. I'd say two of the ballistas are, eight, are fully turned now and facing the back of the ship. But that's basically <coughs> the end of their action for this round. So okay. next round, so they're prepping to go to fire. Yeah, they're prepping to yeah. shoot. Captain. And you do not see the captain. Now, it's the kelp strike. You just basically see this just big undulation from the where you can see from the back forward. And it basically lunges forward about 10 feet. Jesus. So it's completely over this lattice right now. It's right at you. Okay. Like, it's it's basically right in your mm -hmm. in the crab's face. Mm -hmm. Zarthus, you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. 23. Okay. So you're able to dive out of the way. We all um, But you need to tell me where you go, where you mm -hmm. dive to. They're just going to jump off the side then. They have a ring of water walking. Okay. And just be in the water and then okay. go from there. All right. Under the weight of the kelp, you hear those lattice start to crack. And that's it for its turn. Glenn, you're up. So I, I'm confused. I have two huh. claws. Yep. I'm going to say it gives you two attacks. You're, two attacks? Yep. Okay. So with the right claw, he's going to try to go... I have 10 foot reach. So as far mm -hmm. forward as he can mm -hmm. to clip... But it doesn't say it's slashing or cutting damage. It says it's bludgeoning damage, and the mm -hmm. target is grappled. Right. So he's going to attempt to grapple mm -hmm. with both claws each side and kind of pull it away from the lattice to try to keep it from being able to break it. Okay. So you're grabbing onto it with your claws mm -hmm. and then basically trying to push it back? Yes. Okay. Trying to trying to have a... Let's, um, so I'll roll the, the hit for both. Yeah, I'll do the right claw first. Yep. 22 to hit. Yes. And then, oh, that's not as good. 14? Yeah, I think it's... Okay, so... Again, it's kelp. E <laughs> each one does 4d10 plus 5. Okay. Ooh, that's good. 32 with my right claw. Wow. And it is now grappled. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not as much as the other one, though. 25 okay. for the second one. That's, that's still very good. So you've got it grappled right now. Right, he okay. he is trying to contain it to keep it from pushing forward, mm -hmm. and uh, then Glenn will attempt to push it back as it goes to try to get it towards the helm. Yep, as a uh, a huge beast, I would think that he has enough reach to kind of push it up and hold it there. Uh -huh. And I'm going to say, you, so you you're able to get it and pull it where even the little bit that's actually encroached down through the lattice, you're actually able to pull it up. Now. Okay, so basically you can just see up underneath this thing. As it's just kind of looming, and you're, you're holding it back with your two crab. Yep. So Glenn is just there. Did that? Lifted it up, and yep. that's that's. I mean, that's my turn. Right. So that's that's Glenn. Great. Lula, you're up. Okay. I want to move thirty feet towards the bow. Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of hanging on the side. Yep. But I'm just gonna cast blight again. Okay. So con save. Uh, yes. It's so a nineteen. Fucking hate you. I'm just. I'm okay. just saying. You know. <laughs> The kelp, the kelp. Yeah. 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 The kelp. The kelp, the kelp named Alex. <laughs> well, that's your own fault for naming it after yourself. <laughs> all right. Bribe the DM. No, we're all going to die, so it's fine. No, Crab Glen is not going to die. He's going to live on under the sea. <laughs> 14 points of necrotic damage. So seven? No. Oh, you have it already? Yeah, I already have it. It was 29. Nice. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> You're welcome. I figured I'd make it easy for you. Hopefully it kills it. I don't know. Yep, it doesn't. Anything else? And the blight I'm actually still looking kills to see if we yeah. can consider Shambling Mount a plant creature. So, so. yeah, we can. <laughs> so where you were seeing, where you're casting, I guess when you're casting blight, you're just not throwing it out there like you're looking at it so wherever you're looking at it it's you're casting it right <clears throat> right because i don't have to be i mean you see that like the the kelp almost like melts away at that wherever you're hitting it so you can tell you're doing damage to it oh well, that's good yeah but there's a lot of it all right zarthus you're up zarthus is, is just gonna kind of go with their original plan and try and get to the back of the ship mm -hmm. and find some sort of core to hit mm -hmm. 
You're going to run back there? Yeah. I feel like I have to probably double move to get all the way back there. Or uh, yeah, you would. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll do that then. Okay. When I get back there, mm-hmm. do I see anything? Like anything like protruding from like one core point or mm-hmm. is it just all one big mass? Yep. But you do see, now that the, the boat is not rocking back and forth as much, you do see that it is no longer in the water. So you're, again, assuming that the main mass of it is up on where the, the helm is. Okay. Man, I'm going um, to do that. So most of it, you said, is on the helm then? Mm-hmm. How tall, it, like, if I were to climb, how like tall is it from, like, the water all the way to the The ship's the about 30 feet out of the water. Okay. Um, so okay. I do have an ability to fly. So their body is going to get engulfed in the, this, like, sapphire blue energy, mm-hmm. and they're going to propel themselves upwards mm-hmm. and essentially just try and land where, like, the biggest plump of it is mm-hmm. on the helm. So you're landing in the middle of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. The goblins. So we're going to go ahead and let the two that had turned towards fire. Not a one, not a one, not uh, a one. Nope. That's a 19. <laughs> Don't hit the crap. And the other one is a big miss. Not a one. So they do hit it for six points of damage. The other, they're having trouble getting the other ballistas, but they're, the other group are already starting to reload. So, All right. It's the captain's turn. Come on. Okay. Um, everything's moving and undulating, like we said, but you do see kind of like this pop okay. of kind of where you think she is. Okay. You don't see her, but you definitely see Just something like... Weird. Yeah. Okay. And now it's uh, its turn. DC, you, DC 14 to okay. escape the grapple. <laughs> I forgot you grappled it. Oh, Jesus. No. It's a two. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Well, even with the thing, it's, it's still only uh, 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 five, so, yeah. It's still grappled, so it's going to push back on you. It's going to be contested. 16? Oh, no, well, that's uh, 14. It pushes you back, so you feel your crab butt hit the, um, the mast. You know that too much force on that mast is going to cause it to... Right. Yeah. All right, Glenn, you're up. I'm, I'm going to push back. Okay, let's go. Oh, shit. Okay, go. 24. That one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so all six of your crab legs just push forward at once. And I'm going to say you push the mass back to where now it's still kind of over you a little bit, but you're right there at the edge of the rail of the helm. Okay. So you pushed it back. You need to do a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Now, I do have a question. And I'm going to say it's with disadvantage. It's a 7 or a 24, so I'll take the the 7. You fall, basically splayed out on top of the, the okay. kelp now. Okay, that's it? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep that's, okay. all, that's all I can do. He doesn't Ooh. have bonus mm-hmm. actions. Are, uh. Just to be clear, Zarthus and Glenn are both on or holding on. Glenn is underneath the you know the frontmost that you can see. Right. Has you know little claws extended all the way up in the air yeah. and is pushing it back. Zarthus, you can't see. I don't know. You wouldn't even probably have seen him because he had already had... Part of the air, you don't know yeah, that he jumped and then he fell, so he's now prone on top of the kelp. You really don't know where Zarthus is. Well, shit. I'm gonna go ahead and summon my little fae, and it's going to be a fuming fae. Okay. So that it has advantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its turn. Alright. So my fae does have multi attack. Okay. Well, no, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> well, it might. Hang on. <laughs> no. It says the Fae makes a number of attacks equal to half the spell's level rounded down. So it's third level. It would be one. So two. <laughs> it would be one, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. It thank you. Be. I was doing right. No, no, you did not one. say that confidently enough. Uh, I tried. <laughs> and it only has a short sword. 16 to hit. Uh, yes, it hits. Nine piercing damage okay. and two force damage. All right. Zarthus, you're up. Yeah, they're just going to stand up and just slash where they are. First attack is going to be a... It's like Underworld, but with rapiers. An 18? Yep. It hits. For 12 damage. Okay. Second attack is a 26 for 8 damage. Zarthus is then going to action surge and attack for 26 for 14 piercing and with that attack they're going to use a psionic strike 10 force Mm -hmm. and for the final attack natural 20 (laughs) so 
It's a two on the die, so four plus six, so just ten. Okay. With that, you... How do you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not where we're at? Okay. I'm saying something <laughs> telepathically and sylvan to you right now. It was, you know what? It was, it was pretty confident, though, that you said it, so I'll give you that. No, it does not kill it. But the entire thing underneath you shudders and kind of retracts. So do another dexterity saving throw oh, with disadvantage again. Man. Oh, still good. 21. Okay, yeah. You're good. Does, it, does it pull the crab up on deck? Um, no, it doesn't push against you, though. Like, Ooh, it, it's pulling. Okay. It's retracting. So I would say it even helps you. So you're able to get an extra, like, five feet pushing it. You can't understand me in your smelly crab form, can you? Uh-huh. I mean, with your... I have to use an action too. I, 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 yeah, I still don't think that would work because the crab doesn't know any languages. Yeah. But you still maintain your intelligence and everything. Even with polymorph? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, if not, then you would just be a crab running around acting I stupid. Because so, so you still consciously are Glenn. Yeah. So I would say it would yeah, still work. You keep work. all your mental stats. So yeah. you're the most charismatic crab in the world. Yeah. Aww. I'm Seduce crab. <laughs> Seduce the kelp. So goblins. So there are three loaded now. First one is a hit. Second one is a hit. And that is a big miss. That's a total of 14 piercing. Captain is up next. You, with your beady little crab eyes, Mm -hmm. see her hand reach up to the rail behind the helm. And she kind of pulls herself out. So she's about halfway out because okay. you have it lifted up so high mm-hmm. she's able to kind of get herself out a okay. little bit and she's gasping for air because basically she's just been engulfed right you know in this Something. stuff for a while that's all she could do at this point okay its turn is next uh well it has to do a uh, get out of grapple first right right okay let me do that first. dc 14 does a nine no we will accept a nine no Damn. <laughs> remember that remember that <laughs> <laughs> okay it's just pushing. It's not. It's lost its interest in you at the moment. Mm-hmm. You did a shitload yeah, of damage just to it. Shanking the hell out. You're gonna need to do a strength save. Uh, athletics. Or or do, do you athletics or acrobatics? Whichever one you want to do. Okay, I'll do acrobatics. What'd you get? Twenty two. Okay, so you're able to kind of sidestep that. You see it basically come up and back down, and you got yeah. out of it. Glenn, I'm gonna keep trying to push it off the back deck. I have both claws on it. Its attention isn't on me. Right. It was more on Zarthus. Right. Does that give me advantage on this push? Sure. All right. Okay. Okay, so I I rolled the same number on both die. Okay. I rolled one number one time. Do you want to know what the total was? (laughs) Yeah, preferably. 18. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't, I don't want to say it. It's, it, it hurt. <laughs> it's going to hurt my feelings. I rolled, I rolled two threes. Okay. Oh, no. Well, do you want to be asking if I will accept it this time? No. Because you're not going to accept I it. Um, <laughs> so okay. I rolled an eight. Okay. That confidence didn't help. No. Damn it. Well, I got an 18, so it's still not going to help. I, I, <laughs> so I you basically, confidence. it's still, it's attention is this way, mm-hmm. but it does push you back five feet again. Now you can only see the captain's hand because okay. it is now back down on top of the captain. Oh my okay. god. So, all right? Mm-hmm. Ula, you're up. Okay, I'm concentrating with my Fae. I can still cast a non concentrating spell. Right, correct? exactly. So I'm going to cast Thunderclap. Okay. It can be heard up to 100 feet away, but each creature within range, which is five feet, mm-hmm. must succeed on a constitution saving throw. Oh, good there. A <laughs> saving <laughs> goal. That's a yes. nat one. Can I do double damage with that? No. <laughs> what is what is the DC? Would 15. You, oh, I get hit too. I rolled a 14. Well, it's one thunder damage. <laughs> okay. And then I tell my fae to uh, still attack it as yeah. well. all right. And then my fae, 11. It doesn't hit it. No. I'm sure. Nope. So. Okay. Oh, wait. It has advantage. I forgot. Oh, that's right. It does. 11. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I might accept it if you ask nicely. I don't understand. It, like, literally hits Jess, the same Jess, air. if you ask nicely, I might accept it. Well. No. <laughs> Zarthus, you're well, no. <laughs> I'm just going to keep shanking it. 18 to hit. Of course. 14. Okay. Second of Tiak, 25. 11 piercing. Yes. And how do you want to do this? Okay. Yes! yes! So, um, Jinx. Zarthus is just going to be just while they're just on the back of this thing. Um, they're just like chanting battle cries just in primordial. Mm-hmm. Hi-ho. 
<laughs> um, and just with their final strike, just both of them just like cross and just essentially just making an X, um, okay. like with their final strike. Okay, oh, awesome. Yes. You do that, and the thing just it basically just undulates out, and the whole thing kind of deflates. Now it does sit there for a moment, and you guys know what kelp looks like, and it has those waxy looking pod. Those start to shake, and then they burst. Like violently burst? Each one just explodes. So basically anything within 10 feet of the mass Mm -hmm. is going to take a significant amount of poison damage. I'm absolutely not resisting the poison. Hold your breath, hold your breath, hold your breath. Everyone takes 27 points of poison damage. None of the goblins were near the thing, right? No, no. no. The whole thing just Uh, settles on the ship and... It's just this mass of dead kelp now. Yeah, Zarthus is absolutely like radiating the sapphire blue energy. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Can we get it off the ship now? Oh yeah, Glenn, Glenn's crab form is already up there pushing it off, trying to get it completely off the ship. You just see this giant crab just mm-hmm. picking it up and just throwing it over the edge. Okay. Do we see Captain Turgosa? You see her laying prone okay. at the helm. Um, extremely weak. Can I she, go to her? You Sure. I mean, if you'd like to. And I'll cast... Do I, do she seems hurt. I'm yeah. Assuming. She's had, she hasn't been able to breathe for half the time. Then she I got mean, hit I with hit all with this gas, poison. Yeah. Okay. And um, then just that bludgeoning damage in the beginning was, was pretty rough. I'll so. cast um, Cure Wounds at okay. the third level. Oh, wow. And she kind of sits up and, 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 you know, is just kind of out of breath and everything else. As I'm sure Giant Crab Glenn is walking stuff back and throwing it overboard. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's, he's grabbing whatever he can and throwing it all overboard. The Caesar, the ship is kind of naturally moving forward now so you guys will just start drifting whichever direction the it's going to take you unless someone likes to take the helm and try to right things he's going to drop out of the giant crab form and sprint to the helm and check it and make sure nothing's broken anything like that and that he can sail the ship and get it back on course the wheel does feel loose the goblins can probably fix that in, I'd say, probably half an hour or so he'll look at root and just say hey i need this fixed like as okay. soon as possible yeah, and they get on it Let's say it's been about about an hour or so for them to work on the helm and then work on that mast. If you want to um, roll a strength or athletics check, please. That is a 28. Okay. So you're able to kind of, you feel like the, the wheel now is sturdy again. Luckily, the thing didn't damage your rudder at all. Go ahead and do a wisdom check, please. Ooh, that's a 19 on the die. Good. So. It was dusk when the thing first started to attack, and, you know, it's night is pretty much overtaking you. So you're able to see the stars, and you're able to get right where you need to go. Okay. Okay. All right. As far as the checks really quick for the mast, um, go ahead and let's, let's roll the same we did as Mending before. Yeah, just straight wisdom. Oh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. So that one didn't work. So um, do two more. 14. Okay. You feel like it feels yeah. fine. The goblins are also putting bracers on it. Yeah. For now, everything looks okay. And then I'll go downstairs. Okay. Zarthus is just going to go check on the captain and make sure she's okay. Yeah, she's she's just hurting. She's healing. She's not right. dying now or anything, but you know, still, she's in her <laughs> 60s, so yeah. it doesn't mm-hmm. take very well. Okay, so you go down to check the... Uh, the barrels are fine. Oh. Nothing ever got that part of the ship. Okay. So it was all at the rear of the ship, so everything's fine. Do we um, want to check the area that takes on water, too, just to make sure it's not out of sorts? Yeah. So you do, and, and yeah. it, it looks fine as well. You guys get underway again, and um, that storm is still behind you. Ruin. But, but it's pretty far okay. behind you. But it is nighttime now. Captain's not going to be able to man the ship right. um, tonight. She's just, she just doesn't have it in her. It took too much out. Guys, I can I can push through to morning. If you guys want to go down, we can use the goblins that were on the night shift with the captain. I can take them. That way you guys can get some rest. Do we think that the goblins on the night crew would be able to sustain like the lines and rigging and all of that? What they're probably the going to do is work in shifts through the night, almost like you would with you know taking watch. Mm-hmm. Not sleeping, you're going to push into exhaustion for the next day. Right. And also you got to think, no one's eaten Crap. since like midday Shit, and there's there's no berries? food because you guys didn't catch anything and you used the last of your stuff earlier that that day can we make kelp salad if you want to try to eat the uh, <laughs> somewhat living acidic thing that you uh yeah go ahead all right um it's vinaigrette dressing gonna, roll for diarrhea because i'm gonna cast like good berry <laughs> shit i got three all right 
It should really just be like the goblins. I got mm -hmm. 10, so 13. How many more do we need? I already had a good berry earlier today, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, think, you guys I had good berries. We, we all did. But, yeah. So, yeah. So, this it'll, be it'll for last the, you until the next morning. This would be for the goblins. The goblins. Yeah, for the goblins. Yeah. The goblins are good. No, I'll, I'll take one for a goblin. You're going to take one for a goblin? If you take one. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think one check for 13 goblins is fine. There's one. Jess. No, sir. Come on. We're all doing it. I had liver and onions and barf. Okay, I'm done. And, and so, your odds are you getting another bad one? Here. I'm, I'm going to roll it towards so you. so mad. I think we have the same one. Oh gosh! So that's, that's either good. birthday cake or dirty dishwater. Oh no! I might get a liver and onion. <laughs> this last Goodberry check brought to you by Bean Boozled unofficially. I think I got birthday cake. It wasn't okay. bad. I got birthday cake. I got cappuccino. You suck! Yay! <laughs> we all got a good one. Yay! Thank Hi. you, Bean Boozled, for making Goodberry interesting. What are you guys doing? How are we doing the night? Do you want us to kind of do like a watch yeah, but still we, get eight do hours? That, yeah. Okay. Do you want to do second or third? I'll, I'll do second. Okay. Zarthus and I will go down and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then in four hours or so, Zarthus will come up and release Glenn. And okay. then I'll come up at the end. Okay. Great. All right. So you guys get through everything. Um, we'll say the night passes. So whoever is getting up in the morning. Me. What do you want to do? You might want to check on the captain or anything, or yeah, I'll, I will on my um, way down. I actually, when I'm relieved, will go check on the captain before okay. I go down. Um, she is just out cold. So you're at the helm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do a strength check. Son of a bitch, eleven. That's fine. Okay. It, the the, the, the oh, wind's strong, but the, the seas are calm right now. You'll notice that the storm had kind of come in from the northwest mm -hmm. and dipped much farther south. So okay. you guys are fine. But you're getting the effects of the wind, which is nice. Should I do wisdom, On cold too? seas. Um, don't worry about that. As you hear the little guy in the crow's nest start yelling down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't know what he's saying. Shit. Um, roll an insight. It's kind of a weird angle, and you don't know. Dirty 20. Good. Basically, he is excited and pointing ahead. And you see land, so you know Does that it you'll... Does look familiar? I mean, it looks like land. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't know. And you're on your heading, so you, you feel as though you are a few hours out from okay. Port Savorsa. Woo! The one little guy is chattering up there, and it gets the other goblins excited, excited. So you guys, if you are awake, you hear cheering from up on deck. After a, a few hours, you guys pull in to Port Zorsa. You mm -hmm. got to wait there for a little bit. The portmaster greets everyone. I go mm -hmm. and get everybody up when we dock. Okay. Portmaster is a little halfling fellow named Garen Holsby. You've met Garen before. Ahoy, Rosviante! Weren't expecting you. What's going on? An unexpected delivery, but oh, we made it. So. Okay. Uh, where are you coming from? Beach Cairn. We we came um Lantu Freefic had an emergency delivery. Wait, you you sailed from Beach Cairn? Yes. Yes. You went over open sea. It was Oh, it was a tale. I was a giant crab at one point. Oh. Well, I was a brown I, bear steering the helm. This has always been an unusual ship. <laughs> yes. But um so we we were given 30 barrels. Unfortunately, one broke um on the rough seas, but Barrels of what? I, you've got a, what what Ale. company are you delivering Ale. for? A nineteen okay. for history. Sartu Rum Company. <laughs> uh, the Sartu uh, Sartau Rum Company. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you said Sartu Rum Rum Company. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sar hey. Sartu Sartu yeah. Rum Company. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, great! They've been expecting this. I'll get my fellows over here really quick to offload. Uh, who who's yeah. accepting it for? Uh... Yep. Who's accepting the <laughs> shipment? <laughs> I'd like to speak with them personally. Um, I am Garen Holsby. <laughs> okay, Garen. So um, I do they, a couple of things here. You know that you've been a long time, Glenn. Uh, yeah, but sometimes you delegate. I was just making sure. Nah, uh, not today. But you know, you know what they say some people. <laughs> yeah, I wear, I wear a couple of hats. Yeah, um, yeah. I might wear more depending <laughs> on what you ask. We were we were given thirty barrels. Unfortunately, yes. one broke on the way here, so we have yeah. twenty nine. But we do have two personal casks of the rum still left that they gave us all right well i've just got the 
the 30 barrels on my manifest so you can keep those casks for yourself. Um, I just want to make sure that Lantu and, and Freefic and his brother won't be um, docked for only delivering 29 out of 30. Well, we expect a 25% loss on, on most voyages anyway. So, Son you know, only bitch. being down one oh barrel is, is fantastic. So um, I'll get my boys over here in, in a little bit. Um, see, you've got a lot of goblins on your after, ship this time. After he says that, and as he's saying that about the goblins, Ula, are you near me? Yes. You just hear in your head, you hear Glenn's voice, motherfucker, we could have drank a cask of ale and they would have never known. Ula <laughs> like, just rolls her eyes real he's, quick and then He's looks so back. mad after all that they've Or better been yet, we could have thrown a cask of ale at a giant octopus. Oh my God. <laughs> and lit it on fire. Oh no. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So, um, so as he finishes yeah. the goblins, he goes, um, yes, they are quite helpful as well. I'm going to get my boys over here. It'll be over in just a little bit. Is is there a place we can go to um, with the goblins to get them food? We're we're out of food. Actually, yeah, there is. And if you would, you could do me a favor. Two of these barrels mm-hmm. are supposed to go to a little local establishment here, mm-hmm. if you wouldn't mind. Um, it's just right up here on the other side of the port. You, you really can't miss it. Um, a little family place. It's 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 real nice. I think you guys would probably like it. Oh, absolutely. So you got if you wouldn't mind grabbing those two barrels. Mm-hmm. And then head off. Um, where's Where's Catherine Tagosa? She's feeling a bit under the weather, but she will be up momentarily. Okay. He runs off to get his his people real quick. So he's going to look at Root. Uh, Root, can you get all the goblins? I think I found a place that we can take you to eat. Okay. And they, and, and and they if kind not, of guys rowing together, and, and he's kind of going through, and those are up there. He's like, if they have like a slight collar of their shirt, he's trying to, you know, and it's rags are basically right. in, but he's, you know, trying to clean them up a little bit, you know, doing the mom lick the thumb and getting the schmutz off the, right. the cheek and stuff like that <laughs> just to make it more presentable right um they're all passing around in the same comb um Aww. so who's Aww. is somebody getting the captain yes glenn will go down and and he and said root um and zarthus was down there so glenn yep. will go get zarthus and the captain great so the captain is dressed she felt you know when the, the you know she can tell when the right <laughs> the ship stops and she's feeling she's feeling good so I suppose we, we've got here without an incident? Yes, without incident, we could say that. Well, good. Um, I think we all need something to eat. Um, I actually um, spoke to... What was his name? Garen? Garen. 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 Um, I actually spoke oh, Garen. to... Oh, Garen. he? Yes. Um, he, he said that uh, as long as we took two barrels to a local establishment, um, he thinks that it's a, a family establishment that would actually welcome us and the goblins so we could all get some food. Um, to eat. That's that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to um, kind of get things together here. You go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Great. Ten fifteen minutes go by. You guys don't want to just leave the ship, you know, unguarded. But you know, the the guys come through. Garen's men. They offload everything. They have a cart that you can take the two barrels. Garen goes oh, um, this way. Let me let me show you where to go. And he takes you to a, a little place, a little three story building, right on the water, not right at the port, but just right on the water. And there's a little sign above it that says the Fresh Catch, the single door they have. Um, <laughs> Doesn't have a small door. And as you're approaching, you see a um, a little um, halfling woman trying to. She's just able to reach the doorknob and, and twist and open it up. And um, sees you come in. Oh, please come in, come in. Welcome to the fresh catch. Glenn's pushing the, the barrels. So is anybody in front of him? Garen was, and Garen basically introduces you to Mira Crumb. Mira Crumb, and this is her family's establishment. Why don't you just make a second smaller door? Yeah, just within the door. A door within a door. Well, that's an amazing idea. I've never seen a two door. I'm gonna tell my husband. Well, come in, please. Come in, come in, come in. Um, you guys are at the the fresh catch. There's a smell of just fresh seafood cooking, and they're very excited to get the ale barrels. They make quite a bit of money off of this special um, ale this time of year. And the place is just decorated for year's end. It's packed full of people. But she gets people to kind of scoot around and get you guys a table that you can sit at. And Garen says, will you enjoy the year's end? Thank you very much, and we'll we'll see you soon. Yeah, I appreciate it, Garen, and and happy year's end. Enjoy the celebrations. Happy year's end to you. And he, he runs off. Order food and they'll ply you with ale, and again, just very jovial. It's a it, it's a big celebration. And after probably about an hour or so, Mira walks up to you, Ula, and says, "Um, someone would like to have a word with you outside." Okay. 
I will go outside. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So you go outside, mm-hmm. and Catherine Tregosa is standing there. Looks like she normally looks, mm-hmm. except she has a, a pretty big rucksack on her shoulder. And she says, um, you know, Ula, um, I've realized a lot of things, um, especially the last few months. I've realized a lot. This, <laughs> this last little jaunt we made. It's time for me to to retire. Don't you make me cry. It's 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 been <laughs> it's been a good life. It's been a long life. Oh, legit cry. But it's it is time <laughs> to for me to step aside and allow someone else to to take the helm. And then she hands you basically a rolled up piece of paper that is um, ownership of the Raspiante. And as my first mate, I want you to take over as. As captain, I'm um, so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I hope that you you keep the others on. I mean, uh, Glenn and and Zarthos have been so good to me, and even the Goblin crew. That it, it was beyond my wildest dreams that they worked out as well as they did. But you are now the captain, and you do what you feel is best. Give me a little time. I'm taking this last caravan out of town, and. Um, it's hard enough to say goodbye to you, but it'd be probably harder to say goodbye to my boys. So <laughs> You can't do that to me. <laughs> You're telling me Captain Turgalicious is just gonna up and leave. Oh my mm-hmm. god. <laughs> mm-hmm. You you will Glenn's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> you will and this is not the last you'll not hear of me. You I am just traveling Oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> Okay, give me a second. Hurry. <laughs> She's not done. I understand that. I'm not done either. <laughs> it's never over. <laughs> okay, go. Um, this obviously isn't the end. I am giving you the ship, but obviously I'm just going home to Plagano. I'm going to visit family along the way. Of course... As tradition would do, if I would still appreciate five percent of the the profits just to keep me going while I live out my last years. So I'll see you again. This is hard for me to say goodbye to my life as it's been for so long, but I will see you soon. I can't speak right now. <laughs> she sees that and just puts up a, a hand as she has many times with you on because she she was never married. She never had children of her own. So that's why she takes care of her core crew the way she does. Puts her hand on her shoulder and said, be well. And um, happy year's end. And turns around and walks away. Yep. She's just going to sit there crying. (laughs) How long does it take you to walk into the fresh catch? It takes a while, okay? She doesn't cry in front of everybody. Oh, God. Really? Inside into this, outside the game, it, nothing was meant. She was her first mate, you know, and she had a bond with Ula. Means nothing negative about Glenn or about Jarlis. <laughs> I know, but Glenn, but Glenn was the one Glenn. running around like, I am the first mate. Well, but we established that you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. so, so she went about that way. But again, it's not that she's out of you guys' lives. It's just now <clears throat> that you guys are the, you know, captain and senior crew of the right. Raspiante. So now we turn into pirates. Oh my god! And start a new legacy. <laughs> hey, as long as Mama gets her five percent, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know. So right. Ula will go inside. I could lift you into the air if you want while you play. Yes, I'll do that. That's oh what you walk god. in and see. And in the in the center of the te- you're thirty feet in the air. Just you know in- what? I don't even go to sit down. I just open the door and see this. Thing. <laughs> this is my crew. Glenn, <laughs> and it, you immediately know. And you immediately know she made the right decision. Can, they, can, can the whole can the whole tavern be singing along to Glenn's? Oh my song? god, <laughs> Glenn! Yeah, have you taught them the? That's Glenn. this whole time you've taught them the. <laughs> well, they're outside. And Glenn has minutes. been like. Teaching them with the loot the lyrics about Volex Sormen. Oh my god. <laughs> and, and you hear someone you hear the background, I know him, he's a real asshole. And you're like, oh my god. And I rolled a nineteen for my performance. That's Everybody amazing. Wants it. But as he's playing and sees Ula come in, I rolled a disadvantage because he's enjoying playing. But I rolled a 16 and a 14. So my insight would be 17 into Ula. And seeing that she's not feeling herself, I'm assuming. Right. 
he will finish the song and kind of take an empty mug and just let everybody know, be like, I'll continue in a moment, but I need a quick break. Tips are greatly appreciated. And he's going to set the ale down on the bar in front of where um, the crumbs are working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he kind of leans over. What what was her name again? Mira. 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 Mm -hmm. He leans over to Mira and he just says, anything they put in here is yours. (gasps) And he kind of winks. And then he turns and walks over um, and looks at Ula and he's like, Ula, are you, are you okay? I'm fine. And then as she says it, he looks at Zarthus and and like links and he's like, she's full of shit. (laughs) They just shrug. That's about it. Really? That's all you're going to do? Captain Turgosa is... What do you want me to do? Going home. Wait, yes, we're all going home. Plague knows the next stop. What do you mean she's going home? She's taking the next caravan out. And we're going to continue without her. Okay. (laughs) Okay? What do you mean, okay? You were out there a while. Look at me. Look at me. I see you. I am the captain now. (laughs) And we end there. (laughs) Good. And for now, we will close the book on the Rospiante and her crew. Starting next week, we will return to our main campaign with Bracca, Katie, Gibron, and Agard, with Alex Reed once again taking the reins as our DM. If you have not already, please take a moment to follow the show and cast on Instagram. You can also support the show and future content by becoming a Patreon supporter. We are very thankful for the support we have received so far and look forward to all the great adventures to come. Please tell your friends and family about Cocked, a real play D&D podcast. Happy adventuring! Did you ever find your headphones? What do you mean my headphones? Your, your Bluetooth ones? No. The black ones? No. No, I'm sure they're in Dad's car. I just I haven't taken the time to look. I mean, I'm ready to get on with the adventure if you guys. Sorry, uh, yeah, go any, ahead. Any more housekeeping? Are we gonna play D and D? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Reggie, Reggie, coming in with a big hitter. All right, let's go. <clears throat> okay. All Make right. Some so the, <laughs> so that you feeling okay? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know what? I like this so much. I think we need to make it part of like the actual campaign too. Like, I don't know. I thought it was a good just idea. Fun little Did things have, like that. Oh, well, Agard has good berry. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, Reg, um, are, are you good with that? Would you? Would you? Like, would you be willing to try it? I mean, I only want to do it if everyone's going to do it. I'll do it. Okay. I just think it would be fun. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> One of us are going to throw up. Anytime <laughs> we might we may actually need to, to spring for like a five dollar bucket in here just in case. Just in case. We have the hospital ones, like the plastic ring with the oh, yeah. bag underneath it. Is it a clear bag for though? Kid. Oh, it's like well, a, it's, it's well, you clearish. Guys, you guys have those holes cut out. You can just put it right there. Oh, there you go. Oh my god. Well, where am I going to pee then? <laughs> oh, <okay. All> right. <laughs> I gotta go. All right, back in the okay. Uh, No, you're fine. I hope, I hope you guys are ready <laughs> to take on Jaws because this shit's about to go down. Bro, it's <laughs> oh bro, my it's like it's like a okay. It's not. Is it the size of like it's so it's large? So it's like a great white shark. Yeah, it's probably a little bigger than a great white. I think I've sent you like twenty videos on Instagram. Like we, I'm just this whole exchange. I'm like we hey, loaded every exactly. single ballista. We said get the damn heavy artillery from the goddamn bottom. <laughs> we're shooting yeah, we, this. We're shooting this. Shit out of this we're, we're, about, we're about to put the acid thing on. Just no, we're yeah, we not. Oh my god. We are not, out. bro. You're gonna root. You're gonna the shark's gonna melt. Not if we hit it in the head. It's a cloud. Damn, you're right.